even though Rick had certainly earned every bit of everything that he had done with his time on the show and saying, you know what, I'm good now. And we're all like, mm-hmm. you know what, this has been amazing. We get it. Was mm-hmm. it still was it still hard to see him go? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, he was a lot of fun to write for. Um, you know, we, we would always gravitate to the characters that that had that sense of humor. So whether it was, um, you know, uh, McKay, it was a great example. Uh, Vala was another great example. Uh, and obviously Rick, he was the guy, he was the everyman. He was, uh, you know, we would all always kind of adventure vicariously through Rick and he would, his character would always say the stuff you would always think, but obviously could never say. Right. Um, and so he was just kind of, that character was a lot of fun to write for. And, 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 you know, season nine was, was very different, not, you know, a, you know, any worse or necessarily any better. It was just different. And and we did miss uh, the O'Neill character. Was there, conscious or otherwise, spoken or otherwise, and I, I'll just ask you to be as candid mm-hmm. as you're willing, mm-hmm. concerned that the show might not work without him? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, we, we got that ninth season pickup and we'll we'll go into that but i mean there w- there was uncertainty as to whether we would get that that ninth season yeah. um and i think casting ben browder was kind of one of the uh, you know elements that that helped get that pickup i mean the right the ratings were pretty solid as well um and we were kind of building that Friday night uh, Sci-Fi Friday block. That's right. Uh, that, that was must-see television. Always, yeah, with the network would always kind of build up and then knock down and then build up and then knock down. <laughs> it's but, so uh, true. Yeah. Oh my God, what yeah. were they doing? Yeah. Oh gosh. Tune and- in. Come on, tune in. Support these shows. Okay, that's enough out of you. Yeah, except wrestling. Wrestling. Yes. Um, and it shows. We'll we'll talk about this probably a little bit further moving uh, forward into this. But Lou Gossett, mm. Bo Bridges, Ben Browner, mm. Claudia Black. You know, a lot of and not specifically the ones that I just mentioned, but a lot of talent. From my understanding, is you got these high caliber people, mm-hmm. many of whom were doing it because their families loved the show. Yeah, Mel Harris true. is another great example of that. Her son Byron loved the show. And you mm-hmm. were getting these people who were, you know what, I mean, just absolute superstars who were like, you know, I can do what I want at this point in yeah. my career. And I want to yeah. do things that you know, my family will enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Ab- absolutely. And and uh, I remember actually reading an interview with Forrest Whitaker where he mentioned Stargate and Sci-Fi Fridays. And I was like, guys, we got to get Forrest Whitaker on the show. Sadly, we never did. But that would have been a dream. Oh. Gosh, yeah, you know what I mean. It, you had you had a great following there, and it was you know mm-hmm. that was that was the years of TV Guide, you know, being on the cover of, of TV Guide and everything else. So there was there was um it was it was a great era for Stargate for sure, and um I think I think it resonates to this day. Got some fan questions for you, sir. Oh yeah, let's do it. Uh, what is the Goran and Donovsky? This is kind mm-hmm. of an aside to what we discussed. Maybe maybe we can get into a, a little bit of it. Was there a specific story driving King Harry Mayborn, the story behind putting him as as a king? Uh, just really the character himself. I mean, it, it that that's a kind of a dream situation for a character like like Harry Mayborn. And uh, I mean, obviously the inspiration was um, uh, the man who would be king. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, um, but we, you know, most of our the stories would always come about as a result of wouldn't it be fun if we did this? And certainly O'Neill and Harry were always fun. So if we could find a way to sort of uh, create a story for them and put them in kind of a out there situation, we obviously would. And this. Mm. You know, this this was a, a perfect example of, of, of those pieces kind of falling into place, and it and it worked hilariously. Russell Baldwin, with Earth having become so technologically advanced by the end of the show, I'm guessing he means SG One, um, mm-hmm. maybe the franchise. 
How would you have reset the balance with any alien threats that Earth would have faced in the future? Um, and that's assuming you would want to reset the balance at all. Yeah, I mean, at that, you know, that's a tough question in that, um, you know, obviously we dealt with the Ori knowing that the 10th season would be, would have been our last. Um, I don't know what we would have done for, for season 11 if we had gotten that like Apple deal. Um, mm. Maybe things would have changed. But uh, honestly, I don't know. I mean, there, there are certain technologies that, um, you know, again, the writer's room would always come together mm. uh, for the stories, but there would be healthy debate. Um, I was never a big fan of the beaming technology we had. And I remember actually uh, Ben, a browser especially was not a huge fan he's be, he'd be coming by my office like there's got to be a way to get rid of that beaming technology <laughs> something happens you know you, you know, end up inside a rock or something and they can't use it <laughs> and you kind of you kind of the the only solution that i can even think of is is one that you kind of use with the hyperspace windows is the uh, tarot device in atlantis you know you create something out there in the universe that once it turns on distorts certain frequencies and makes things unusable. Well, you know? yes, but what a there's, great there's idea. Also, yeah, but there's also uh, what we would we often did uh, with technologies is we just send it to Area 51 and <laughs> our, our incompetent, slow moving bureaucratic gov government would uh, you know it would just disappear into sort of whatever <laughs> you know backlog of uh, of things they have to get around to. And uh, you just wouldn't hear about it again. And it, it may seem kind of like, oh, implausible. But really, when you think of how governments work, totally believable. Totally believable. Yes. Aside, mm -hmm. the Air Force wanted to support uh, Independence Day, Dean and Roland's Independence Day, mm -hmm. if they did not mention Area 51. That's, that's what mm -hmm. Dean Devlin has said. The mm -hmm. Air Force clearly supported SG-1. Mm -hmm. I guess I can't believe I've never asked this question, but I haven't. Were you ever given any crap for using Area 51 in stories? No. I was never. And I don't think Rob and Brad were either because I think they would have mentioned it. Yeah. I've always well, wondered think, that. Because you guys talk, used think, Area 51. Did we use Area 51 or did we refer to it as Area 52? Area 52 was considered the Stargate program at the end of uh, Season 1, I believe. Area 51 okay. was definitely visited. Okay. You know, the mimic devices were stored there. Um, mm -hmm. McKay was sent there. Uh, for sure, Area 51 was a thing. Well, I guess, I guess, I guess Area 51, I'm not sure what really the difference would be between the film and the series, but maybe the Air Force are going kind of accustomed to sort of the way the series worked mm -hmm. and kind of the fun aspect of the show. And eh, no one's going to take that seriously. Well, exactly. <laughs> it's plausible deniability. Yeah. Right? You know? I mean, in the words of Hammond, you know, uh, in uh, Wormhole Extreme, in the event of any future breach, we'll be able to point to this program. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Exactly. And it's like, there you go. Mm -hmm. That's if it stays on the air. Thank you for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving us a thumbs up with that like button. It will encourage the algorithm to show this to other Stargate fans. Also, please consider sending this to a fellow Stargate friend. I also want to invite you to subscribe to future episodes right here on YouTube. We are a live show, so changes are likely to happen all the time. And if you plan on joining us live, you'll want to be the first to know. Be sure to visit dialthegate.com for the complete guest schedule so you'll know when to join us and ask your very own questions to our guests. See you on the the other side.